Jamie Rubin, one of the directors, we heard from him uh, moments ago. No free hit for Newcastle. We're going as deep as we can uh, in this competition tonight. It all kicks off in Milan against AC Milan. Josh is a big Newcastle fan. Josh, good morning to you. Good to have you on, mate. You, you, you probably heard Jamie Rubin saying, no, we're optimistic. We want to go as far as we possibly can. That's from the very top of the football club, Josh. How do you guys feel about it? Absolutely agree with him, Jim. Good morning, mate. Good morning to Simon. Good morning, morning, Josh. So, literally, I'm just so happy to be back, to be back in the Champions League. It's just been a phenomenal, you know, couple of years since, or year and a half since the owners come in. It's been absolutely brilliant. Keep doing what they're doing. But yeah, we'll see what happens tonight. Hopefully, Anthony Gordon goes there and presses them like mad with, with Almiron. And hopefully we can pick up a result. I mean, it's, it's music to your ears when he says something like, this is no free hit. It's a hell of a oh, group, though, isn't it? Not. PSG and Dortmund, Josh. Yeah, absolutely not. you got to think, if they come to St. James's Park, we are going to go right at them. <laughs> and like you said, when we, you know, respect to Mbappe, see what a great player they are, great players that they've but they, all the teams have got, but we've got to literally go right at them and give them no respect, try and get the three points and see how far we can go. OK, Josh, thank you for that. Good luck tonight. Uh, there's Good Malcolm, who's... Thank you, mate. He's an Arsenal fan. Hey, guys, of course, uh, Newcastle say it's a free hit. Um, they're way ahead of the time. If they don't go through, nobody's really going to criticise them. That equals a free hit. No, no, I don't think... A, you know, a free hit in the minds of whom? Do you think the players think they've got a free hit? Do you think Eddie Howe's going in there with that mentality? Maybe the media will characterise it that way, but these are players that are played... Uh, that are playing at Newcastle because they believe in the vision. They're in the Champions League. Some of them have been there before. I don't think they think it's a free hit. Will you criticise them if they get kicked out at the the group stages? Would I snigger? Yeah. Would I criticise them? Well, will you have a pop at them? (laughs) You missed that. Um, No, why would I? Oh, hang on. If they go in there and they get their heads handed to them... (laughs) Um, and they get beaten every single game, you'd have to deploy the same standards as you deployed to Rangers last year. You can't sit there and say, because everyone likes Newcastle right now, that's up, and everyone's second favourite team, they should be given a different level of dispensation. No, if they if they put, if they go into the Champions League and they put up commendable performances, which you absolutely would expect them to do at St James's Park, and they don't qualify, then I would think it's a great learning curve. But I don't I don't think in the mindset of a professional footballer... Um, operating in the Premier League, operating on a project like Newcastle where the owners are prepared to invest £150 million every time a transfer window comes round. I don't think those players think it's a free hit and I don't think the manager thinks it's a free hit. We've seen what a free hit looks like. Rangers getting their head handed to them and and Gianni Van Bronco's getting booted out of his job. True. There's Jack. I mean, I think it's such a good story, this, that they're back after 20 years. Uh, Jack is saying I'm being over-sentimental. The loving for Newcastle never ends on TalkSport. It's so sickly. Half of Europe don't even know who they are. Really? Well, I did have that conversation with Freddie Shepherd, the late Freddie Shepherd, once upon a time when he told Great me how guy. wonderful Newcastle were. And I was saying to him, I've been in Seville talking to some Spanish fans, and they're like, Newcastle? Ooh? No. I don't think that's the case now, for different reasons, because they have Saudi ownership. And given that we are the official PR extension of Saudi, or you are, um, it's, the people will be aware of the fact that <laughs> they're owned true. by a Saudi <laughs> conglomerate. We're talking about Saudi ownership. Does a perfect owner exist in football? Uh, what do they look like in the modern day landscape Martin Samuel this morning in the Times there is really such a thing as a perfect owner just ask Everton fans Um, plain rich isn't good enough anymore and he even goes on to tell us that McElhenney and Reynolds had everything crossed that they would stay uh, and and that uh, they they would uh, move in the right direction and get promoted to the football league Um, does does a perfect you're not having them, incidentally, give, are they? Give over. Oh, uh, why, why are you not having we, the Wrexham we, owners? We, I'm, I'm fine with them, but we, we also must understand that this is a media project, and as much as it is a media project, it's a football club underneath it, and Wrexham fans will take the benefit. Are you seriously going to tell me, with the wealth that Ryan Reynolds has, that the cost implication of Wrexham not getting out of the National League would have meant that they were whatever he described it as being? Give me a break. He said, well, well they said it from, Give from me their, a break. From a financial perspective, if we didn't get promoted this year, yeah, we, we would be in trouble, right? Screwed. Oh, give me a break. On what basis? 
oh, you, what you mean is you'd have to put your hand in your own pocket and you wouldn't be as compelling to Netflix because no one would be interested in a football club in the non-league in the back end of butt plug nowhere. The bottom line is is that the reality of it is is that you have to put your hand in your pocket. So it's a silly analysis. What are we talking about here? A couple of million quid, three million quid. With due respect, it, you, you cannot tell me that you can't afford that. Yeah, but so maybe I, I would suggest that maybe you were a wee bit too quick to put your own hand in your own pocket. That goes with the territory. And you'd agree with that, I'm well, sure. Yes, of course. That goes with the territory. That's the nature of the beast. That's the price on the ticket. That's what you get when you're in a football club. So don't be telling me, as, a, as apparently a Hollywood superstar that's worth 300 million quid, that you and a non-league team's cost implications, if you didn't get out of the league that year, were going to mean that you were doomed. Listen to me now. If there is a perfect owner in the game right now, who is it? Oh, I don't know. Depends depends on whose perspective you're looking what through. What does it look like? Um, Newcastle probably think the Saudis are the perfect owners for us because they've given us belief, they've given us hope. So for Newcastle fans, you could say that, and you could say the same for Man City fans. Me sitting on the outside looking in... As an impartial observer, despite the fact that people that that I criticise think that I'm not, I can't applaud those ownerships because I think that they bring with them a problem for football. I think the ecosystem of football has been challenged by some of the things that these people yeah. have done. In that it's too easy. Steve Gibson would probably fall yeah. in the category yeah, of yeah, but, but he can't. A very he, decent owner. Yeah, he's a great owner. He, he's, he's stayed there for 30 years, stuck it through thick and thin, but his team languished at the bottom of the championship. Yeah. So by, by a barometer of successful representation, they'll say we like Steve, he's got full of integrity and committed to the football club, but our team are at the bottom of the championship. How does that then fall into the narrative of the micromanaging of what a good owner looks like? So is Martin Samuel right? The perfect owners don't exist anymore? No, there is no there such is thing. really such a thing as there, a perfect there owner. There is no such thing as a perfect owner. Like, he, he uses an analysis. Tony Bloom has spent an inordinate amount of money to get Brighton to where they are, and there is an inordinate amount of cost implications behind it. It's not all been this plain sailing because all of a sudden they've hit the zeitgeist of doing something that people don't tend to do, which is be professional and be very disciplined in what you're doing. Make sure that there's a reason behind it. Get your best in class and make sure people are accountable for what they do and also use data and technology to advance your thinking and maybe look at everything through a different set of eyes. Absolutely. But it still costs Tony Bloom half a billion quid to get there. Yeah, but in the eyes of the fans, he's probably as near as damn it, the perfect owner. Because look at that. Right now. As soon as you mentioned them there. Right now. Dozens upon dozens of messages. Adam, Tony Bloom is a perfect right owner. Now. Passionate, forward thinking, and a shrewd businessman. Right now. And that's absolutely right. But from the point right, of view. Right, owner, for those who don't know. Absolutely. And Tony has, I mean, what he has done for that football club, they were playing on a paddy field with a scout hut as their boardroom. All right, just and because I, you don't like Brighton. I would think it's probably where they merited to be, but he's uh, he's <laughs> escalated them up and he's catapulted them up, built them a stadium and turned them into a, a very, very good football club that everything is right with at this moment in time. You never miss a chance to have a swipe at Brighton, do you? Why would I? <laughs> it's there to be done. I have no great love for Brighton. Um, Tony, Tony Bloom, well nigh the perfect owner. I think we're agreed on that. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.